Welcome to Your Career Revolution presented by the Entrepreneur Source. My name is Mike Toper and we have got an exciting episode today with two wonderful guests. But first, I'm going to bring in my co-host, the radiant Tamara Loring, who is the Chief of Brand Ideology for the Entrepreneur Source. Tamara, how's everything up in Connecticut this week? Super excited. Like I was telling you, Mike, today's podcast is going to be unbelievable. For weeks, I've been thinking, what are we going to ask Victor and Mike about how this journey began? So I can't wait to get started. I am so stoked. We're going to introduce you to those guys right now. But before we do that, I want to have a quick reminder that uh, many of these podcasts are tied around the newest book release from the Entrepreneur Source. That is Your Career Revolution. Reimagine and Reclaim the Life of Your Dreams. You can find that wherever all major books are sold contributed to by all the TES coaches. It's uh, it's going to change your life in a way that, well, this young man can talk about his life being changed uh, a few years ago. I'm going to bring in our guests, Victor Guy and Mike Rachi, and I'll ask uh, if you guys could just introduce yourselves for us, starting with Victor. Hey, how you doing? I'm Victor Guy. I'm one of the youngest franchisees with OxyFresh Carpet Cleaning. I'm located in the DFW area, if anyone, you know, in the area is uh, listening anything you need a job done i'm here but uh yes who kind of nervous man i haven't did a podcast in ever actually so this is my first podcast but well i'm glad we could break you in there man no better place uh, yeah there's just a brief brief introduction there all right mike uh, how about you well i'm a uh, <clears throat> excuse me i'm a coach with the entrepreneur source um, and I'm living in the uh, beautiful Central Valley of California, um, and I'm a bit on the opposite spectrum of, uh, of Victor, although this is also my first podcast. So yeah, here we go. And we, so tomorrow and I, we're breaking them in tomorrow. We like that. I love it. <laughs> so uh, so let's start with uh, Victor. And again, um, you know, if you, if you haven't read the article that we've got attached with this with Victor, he's a young man. He's 20 years old bought Bitcoin at a very young age, was very smart, sold it, and, uh, and it kind of takes off from there. And so, Victor, you were, you were a young guy in your, your mid-teens when you sold and were able to accumulate some wealth off of Bitcoin. Um, you had some influence from your grandmother. I wanted to ask you a little bit about that, um, about how your grandmother influenced you to take some of this newfound wealth that you had as just a teenager and kind of encouraged you to seek business ownership. Can you tell me kind of how that came along? Well, the whole process began when I was in middle school. That's about, what was that, 2014, when Bitcoin and things just started coming out. You know, they started putting a lot of machines in stores and things like that. And at a young age, I was always curious about what I want to do you know, for my future and things like that, but could never just get my head wrapped around it, you know? So I began getting allowances and things like that. You know, as a kid, you do chores around the house, collect allowance and stuff like that. So with my allowance, I didn't really, you know, I had everything I wanted growing up. So there wasn't really anything that I needed at the moment. So my mindset was like, you know, what can I do with this money to, you know, help grow or do it like help around the house or anything like that. So I just began looking into investing. You know, a lot of my friends was like, what do you know about investing? I was like, I really don't know anything about it, but it's just something that I want to jump into, you know, and, and just look forward to. Yeah. How how, or how young are you when you're thinking about investing? Uh, I was in my eighth grade of middle school. So I want to say I was about 14, 15. Tomorrow, we were, we were trying to go to the movies with our allowance, I think, right? Like <laughs> Barely, right? You know, begging for money so I could have some popcorn with it. Definitely. Well, well, Vic, can you go child, growing up as the only child, you know, uh, I feel like I was kind of limited to certain things. You know, going out with friends and stuff, that was always, you know, it was fun to do. But I, I don't know. My mindset was just different. I was always focused on how I want to set up my future. You know, a lot of people my age wasn't thinking about that. Like you said, going to the movies, skating, things like that. There was more of their forte, but I was just, you know, kind of like, I just wanted to stand out. I was just different, so to say. And a lot of my teachers and things, they, they said the same thing as well. But, um, yeah, once I did start investing, I want to say Bitcoin was like roughly between 
10 to 20 dollars somewhere in between there it was relatively cheap you know it just came out a lot of people not it was a lot of news articles about it like how would this coin you know take off and things like that so me i wasn't really thinking nothing of it i was like you know i'll put a few dollars here a few dollars there you know and then just let it sit and see how that how that works out i didn't really know anything about the stock market so that's why i just let the money just sit over time and things like that but um you know a few years go by and the prices just start skyrocketing i mean just five thousand ten thousand i'm like whoa this is this is this is a lot of money you know and by this time i'm a freshman in high school so i'm like man my friends and stuff getting jobs and things like that and i'm like well i do it's about that time i you know get a job or something like that i need some money and i end up just going back into my my portfolio and i'm seeing like whoa you know i still have some some bitcoin here and my portfolio was like 30 to thirty-five thousand at the time that was yeah freshman year around that time i was like i didn't i didn't really even know what to do. i was just amazed like wow you know i didn't think this coin would just you know take off like this and put me in the position that i am today but hey it really it really did change my life though yeah and so you so you see that and so instead of again i feel like at a young age many people would be like all right i'm buying a car how did you uh decide to 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 use that to become an entrepreneur so first um i had to get my grandmother to do a lot of legal documentation because i wasn't even I wasn't 18 yet, so me um, trying to withdraw all that money, you know, it's just a lot of legal thing that you have to get taken care of before you can, you know, even touch that money. So, um, yeah, I, I had to tell her, you know, what was going on. I was like, you know, a few years back when I was asking you for money and stuff and I started putting it into this account, you know, this is the outcome of it. And she she was shocked. Like, she <laughs> broke down in tears. She's like, Vic how did you get all this money? I'm like, I'm just as shocked as you are. You know, like we're in the same boat. I didn't expect this to come out how it did, but it did, you know? So I'm talking to her like, I don't really know what to do with the money. Me or her never seen that much money in our life. She told me the most money she ever, you know, just seen in her life was about $2,000 roughly, you know? So once she seen the the five digits she was you know heart dropped and i'm like i don't i don't even know what to do with this kind of money i'm thinking to myself what what can i do i don't want to just go blow it you know like you said kids my age want to get a car and you know buy all the fancy things and stuff like that but a couple months from now you know i would have been dead broke you know just because the lifestyle is just like i don't know that wasn't just my cup of tea I didn't see myself, you know, dwelling on the materialistic things in life at such a young age just because I know there's so much life to live and only little time, you know, to do everything that you want to do. Mm -hmm. What? So, yeah. you know, we began talking and she was like, you know, why not invest in a business? And me, at that time, I was about... 17 okay so this is about a year before i even actually started uh the franchise i didn't i didn't really want to just for some effect i was still young it's a lot of things i needed to learn first you know but i did begin taking business management classes my uh my sophomore year to get a better understanding of like if i did want to take that extra step you know am i actually ready and prepared for it just to make sure that i don't just go throwing money around and you know everything doesn't go as planned but she she kept kept my head straight you know she was giving me a few pointers and things like that no one in my family actually has started a business yeah to this day no one in my family has ever started a business or probably never even thought about it as well so it was like it was kind of like an achievement for me as well just to even branch off and to even you know start the company sort of say it was just um she was just a lot of motivation to me you know like i don't <laughs> it's very hard to explain it just because like everything just happened so fast but uh 
yeah, she just was telling me, you know, you should invest it. Don't be like the rest of the family. You know, they want to go out and go get all the fancy cars, clothes, jewelry, et cetera, et cetera. You know, and then a few months down the line, you know, you have nothing to show for it. And that's what really just got me thinking like, yeah, you know, she's right. I could, this could change my whole life instead of going off to school and, you know, going to college and, you know, studying for the next three to four years, but I'm paying money for that when I could just get my jump start now and start my own franchise and just go from there. Yeah. And, and Tamara, to your point, that uh, it's one of the things you talk about, that's kind of like this revolutionary thinking that, that we kind of look at. Exactly right. You know, when Mike and I were discussing your story, Victor, you know, typically we see people wanting to reinvent their lives. You know, um, they already have a decade, two decades, three decades, and they're just sick and tired of the rat race. What amazed me about your story is just the fact that you were curious enough to say, I don't know anything about this Bitcoin thing. I don't know anything about investing, but let me tried. What do I have to lose? And then you were as shocked as your grandma was. And then to have the clarity of mind to say, okay, what an opportunity I have in front of me right now. And to not do what the average person does, right? To then say, okay, now what's next? How many kids do you know who at you know, um, leaving high school, which is probably the most pivotal change in your life, say, wait a minute, I could go to college, right? That's probably what most of your teachers tell you. Work hard, yeah. study hard, get good grades so you can go to college. The part that crushes me is when I see the amount of student debt and loans kids acquire, and I think about their future. I think, what is the next decade or the two, next two decades going to look like when they barely make enough money to pay off their loans? That's not freedom, in my opinion. And so I listen to your story and I see that you don't go the path that the majority goes. You travel the road less traveled. That takes courage. That is, I mean, do you feel like a rebel? Do you feel like a rebel? I definitely do. I definitely do. And also during the time, I had a few upperclassmen that were also going off to college and they was giving me advice like hey man if you know if you have the choice to do something else that can you know help benefit you in the future once you get out of school besides going to college then go ahead and take that route and you know I looked into that as well and at the time um, it, I wasn't worried about the um, the student debt just because I had the money to pay my full tuition if I did want to go you know so that that wasn't the issue it was just the simple fact that I, I knew people who went off to college and they, they, you know, got out and realized this just wasn't it wasn't what they wanted to do or they just, you know, far behind on the payments, you know, can't even finish school. So it was a lot of factors that made me you know, kind of sit back on the, the college situation and think, like, is that something that I really want to do? Because I wanted to become a, um, an engineer. I was going to go to. Uh, um, engineering school, a technical college in um, Harlingen, Texas is located, you know, south towards uh, the border and things like that. And I did want to become an engineer, but I don't know. It just, uh, well, it's just hard to you engineered, uh, you engineered your own success, man. That's what you did. You just didn't have to take uh, <laughs> the college classes for it. And the thing is, if that's where his heart is, he can still do it. But what gets me excited is he took a lump of cash, he put it into a proactive investment vehicle. Now you're building something that maybe you could sell, maybe that's something that's going to create wealth for you so that you, you, you could still always go to college. I mean, that's not off the table. If engineering yeah. is where your heart draws you. But you've got a cash flowing asset. That's the part that I'm so excited about. And you're right. So many kids go to college. How many people actually build a career in what they studied for? Mike, you speak to people all the time, right? You're speaking to one right now. I'm not even in the business of my degree. So, uh, yeah, you're absolutely right. It happens. And um, and somebody who might be able to speak to that, too. We're going to bring in uh, Mike Rachi, the, the TES coach and noted Grateful Dead fan. Uh, Mike, you're on the... Victor, you know, we're talking to Victor, right? As a teenager, he decides that he wants to be an entrepreneur and, and he reaches out. And we should mention he's 20, he started his business, um, uh, an eco-friendly floor cleaning business in November of 2021. He's still 20 years old. But Mike, you you went through the rat race as Tamara uh, 
uh, a call that they're working a career for decades. Can you kind of just uh, tell us what led you to career coaching? And, and then we'll get into a little bit about you working with Victor. Yeah, sure. Um, <clears throat> well, I'd spent 34 years in the newspaper industry, um, all different capacities, um, had a very good career there for years. But like most people was working, you know, it was a salary job. So, you know, it wasn't 40 hours a week. Um, and being I was in operations about the last 15 years. So I used to tell people I don't write the paper and I don't sell the paper, but I do everything else that gets it to your door. So, you know, that was basically a 724, 365 day a year on call, uh, you know, situation for years and years and years. Um, and eventually kind of, you know, the newspaper industry changed over time. Uh, the company I worked for um, made, they, they invested in, they purchased Knight Ritter, which, which was basically the minnow swallowing the whale in, in 2008, right before the housing dirt downturn. Um, so from then on, it was, it was a big challenge. We did a lot of, you know, centralizing, regionalizing, um, downsizing. Um, and eventually it just got to the point where, uh, you know, I was looking to, um, well, they offered me an early retirement and a couple things happened. I lost my wife to cancer in 2015, leukemia, and found myself a single dad with three kids. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, working 60 hours a week really wasn't good for any of us. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I was, they offered me an early retirement. I took that. Um, just because of a lot of other reasons too. I mean, we'd gone from 120 people burst at the seams in our building to five of us left in a strip mall, um, you know, and, and so uh, at that point, it was the first time since I was in high school, college that I wasn't working um, and I had a chance to really think about what I was going to do next. Um, so, you know, first thing on the agenda was take care of the, the well, not honeydews, but all the things around the house that had been building up for years that I wanted to get to while I was looking for jobs. And, and then I got a call from a coach um, with the entrepreneur source who took me through the process and, you know, the program um, and made me evaluate what my goals were, which were not really what I, um, what I had in my mind. Um, so that, that allowed me to, you know, go, Oh, you know, I really need something where, I can be at home for my kids, uh, you know, be here working out of the house, still make a living. And then they also have aging grandparents that, um, that at some point are going to need some help. They're about three and a half hours away. So uh, this also allows me to do that while helping people. Um, and it's, it's, it's interesting because, you know, we always talk about, you know, the 95% of people uh, that uh, get into a business, get into one they never would have looked at at their own. And I'm a perfect example of that. I mean, you know, I looked at multiple different businesses with my coach and, um, you know, this was the, I'm like, well, I don't, I'm not the frontline person. I, I'm not, I, you know, I don't, I talk to people all day in operations, but, you know, I'm, I'm putting out fires and just making sure all the, all the gears are, are running smoothly. Um, so mm -hmm. it was a big, it was a big difference for me, but that's, that's how I got into it. Um, and, uh, you know, and, you know, I have to say Victor was probably one of, the most inspiring uh, clients I've had to date um, being that he was completely on the opposite side of the spectrum. From me. <laughs> yeah. And, and for you, you know, again, you kind of explained it and Tamara and I talk about this, this is what you talk about. Um, you know, almost this moment of clarity, right? You just described it. They made you kind of evaluate, as you said, what your priorities are and what you needed to do. And, um, and that's what we see a lot tomorrow, right? I mean, that's, I mean, we're talking about Victor starting a business and Mike completely changing careers. I mean, it, it normally it is that moment, right? Yeah. You know, and I think, you know, the fun thing about um, Mike's story is how his mind shift changed. He thought he was looking for another job, but when he really got clarity about his goals, his needs, his expectations, a vision for his future, he realized that your typical, your traditional job was not going to mold around the life that he was looking to create. And so, you know, he wasn't looking for entrepreneurship or business ownership, but what he discovered was, wait a minute, there is a way for me to have the life I was meant to live and be able to obviously generate revenue and build a business on top of that. So that is exciting to me. And the fact that you found, um, a, or Mike, you said a coach found you, right? Um, you didn't really come out looking for us or seeking out the entrepreneurs. I did not. Look, no, I was not looking. No, 
No, no. Wendy, Wendy was my coach. Wendy wow. Was. Now, Victor, I think it's fascinating. How did you find the entrepreneur source? How did it come to be that you were open to coaching and looking for help? I think I heard you say, grandma said, boy, you've got an opportunity here. Don't mess it up, right? But how did you know where to look? Well, I started doing my own research and things like that. Me and Mike were talking months and months before I even decided, okay, I actually want to look for a franchise before I even had my options of franchises laid out. We talked for months prior to that and he was giving me good advice as well. It was like, make sure this is something that, you know, you really want to do and that you're actually dedicated to this. So that once you take this path, you know, there's no leaving, you know, and he was really helpful on that end. My grandmother, on the other hand, she was, she, she was very, uh, how do you say this? She kind of just simple minded. She didn't really know anything about businesses and how to run it, especially investing in one. Like I said, my fam no one in my family has ever considered starting a business. So there's never been any talks about, hey, any entrepreneurship or sorts like nothing like that. So me taking that step really made her proud at the same time. She was just like, make sure you know, that you know what you're doing before you just jump into something. And she wanted me to invest in things that was like neighborhood friendly, things that was like actually local. But I wanted to do something that everyone could, you know, like rely on me to come service them, not like a food truck or things like that, clothing brands and stuff like that. I feel like that's kind of simple minded. And I just decided to do my own research and, you know, I just started looking up franchises for, you know, a certain price range and things like that. And then I believe I received an email first from the entrepreneurship and that's how me and Mike initially got in contact. Yeah. And Mike, can you, I wanted to ask you this and, and Victor kind of just, he, he expanded on it a little bit, but can you tell us, what it was like working with Victor again, um, you know, traditionally when Tamara and I are kind of having these chats, it's been somebody who's worked in a business and right. They're looking for a change or something different with Victor. He's, he's looking not to go the route that the other teenagers may have gone. So you guys kind of come at this from again, Mike being the, uh, I hope you don't mind me say the statesman, the other statesman, you've been working for a while, right? And then Victor, he's kind of just seeing where he wants to go. What was that relationship like as you guys worked together? And, and how did you kind of guide him to where he is um, with his now eco-friendly uh, floor cleaning business? Well, I appreciate you asking that question. And it, it was quite a journey. You know, I found, found Victor. He had um, done some research on Franchise Match. And so I had no idea you know, who, when I originally called him, who he was, how old he was, um, we started to chat and I remember talking to him. I knew he was young, but I didn't know how young. Um, and my, you know, I was, I was, you know, I had just talking to him that very first time. I remember him telling me that like his, he, him and his friends had a small clothing line they were working on as a little side gig. He had some money. He didn't know what to do with it. He was considering going to college. He told me about the mechanical engineering, but he, you know, um, but he just wasn't sure what he wanted to do, whether he wanted to go to college. Um, and, uh, you know, and so I, I, I remember telling him, I said, you know, I think I kind of did, wasn't going to work with you because I felt you were too young. I, I was I, I, the dad in you. Went, oh, no, you should go to college, you know. And then I thought about it in my own my own family where I have. One son that, that is in college and doing wonderful. Another son that, you know, I pushed him to go into college and it really wasn't the right thing for him. Um, so it's a different path for every person. Uh, and so I had to, in my mindset, kind of go, okay, I have to keep an open mind as well. I asked Victor to keep an open mind. I said, okay, he's, he, this is a young man that's, that's very, uh, you know, he's, uh, he's, he's ambitious. He's wants to you know, move forward and get out of, you know, where he is right now. Um, he's art. He was, I mean, he was working part-time too. I don't remember you're working at like FedEx or somewhere and yeah, going to school yeah. and talking to me. Um, and so, you know, at the very beginning, there was a bit of a, uh, you know, I, I had to kind of get over, okay, I need to be a coach and open to him. He's wants to learn. So let's go. 
and so, you know, we went through a bit of going back and forth with, um, I, you know, I think for a while, I don't know, I, you know, I was presenting some things to him and I, I think Victor was like, no, 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 no. You know, he was, I think he was apprehensive of me as well at the beginning. Um, so it took a little bit to where, you know, I had to kind of push him and go, okay, here's what we're going to do. You know, what, here's what we need to do next week to, to, to get you moving forward and learning about these different brands. And once I got him into the, the, the mode of, um, you know, getting excited about it and learning about the different brands he was looking at, um, then he just took off. Um, and, and from there, you know, it was, um, a lot of back and forth as far as, you know, him giving me, uh, feedback as to, you know, how he was feeling about things, uh, you know, being at his age and, you know, the fear of it, what other people were saying to him. So he hit a bit of a crabs in the basket at one point, I remember, um, you know, and then, then we had the challenges of, um, you know, he, he had some um, things he needed to take care of with the DMV, and then he had to, um, you know, work through that, and um, you know, and then he he moved forward. He, I remember, he just went, oh, you know, I made my decision. You know, I'm gonna, I'm moving in with, I'm moving with OxyFresh, and uh, you know, um, you know, I, and and I was excited for him. I mean, it was, but then there was all, you know, this from there on the steps that, you know, getting his license and, and sure. uh, so on and so forth. But, uh, yeah, it was, you know, I, I just had to look at it from a standpoint of, you know, God, I wish maybe if I'd had that money and I was his age, that would have been a great thing to do as well. I mean, you know, these days, college isn't necessarily the, the right path for everyone. Um, and if you can get four years ahead or six years ahead of the people your age and you have the, you know, the the ability to do it, do it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Mike, R, how many times have you and I spoken to business owners who are doing it now and we say any regrets or, you know, if you could do something over again, how many of them say, oh, T, I wish I would have done this a lot sooner. And it always makes me think about the Chinese proverb, right? The best time to plant a, a tree would have been 10 years ago, 20 years ago. The best next time is now, you know, so, so many people wish they had the wisdom or even the curiosity at Victor's age to be able to go out there and seek help or ask for advice. I mean, so many people try to figure it out by themselves. So I have to applaud Victor for being open to coaching and you too saying, hey, do you know what? I'm not going to steal his dream. Yeah, he's maybe a lot younger than most of the people we deal with, but let's go on this adventure together. And then learning to trust each other too, because Victor, I can imagine, right? Telling a perfect stranger at that point in time, hey, listen, like I have a lot of money or I've, you know, I've um, uh, made this investment and I don't know what to do with this money. I'm sure grandma was like, make sure you don't speak to a scamster here. <laughs> make sure. Yeah, exactly. That was, that was going through that a lot. Make sure you're not just, you know what I'm saying, trying to throw your money out there to anybody. Make sure they're actually legit. And and talking to Mike, he seemed like a, a pretty courteous person. Like, he didn't seem like he's a, trying to push anyone over or anything. He was really willing to work with me through every step of the way, which I really appreciate that as well. Mike and my grandmother were the main two people in my corner when I want to get this thing started. Yeah. Like you mentioned, me and my friends had a clothing brand and, you know, it was his idea, but I was, you know, sort of the, the funder, so to say. So yeah, it was yeah like, Victor's got this money, you know? <laughs> yeah. So it was, it, it was just like a, it was a lot of emotions going around just because like, yeah, I want to have my friend, but I also want to have my own, you know, business going on to where I don't have to worry about splitting any profits with anyone else or things like that. Or just, just go to say, like, we had a lot of um, summertime wear. So once the weather changes, you know, what if he runs out of ideas and things like that? Now we have nothing to sell, you know. So it was a lot of factors that played into that as well, which made me really leaning on hey, I need to just go ahead and start my own thing. You know, we can still be cool. We can still have the clothing brand, but I need to just have my own, you know, eggs in a basket, so to say, so I can focus on myself moving forward. Because we were getting to the point where, like, we're finna get ready to graduate high school and things and, you know, tell them how life will play out once you get out of school, mm. you know? So, yeah. And that, yeah. as we kind of, you know, begin to kind of wrap this thing up, I'm curious, Victor, you know, we talked about your relationship together with Mike and, and kind of exploring that, but what was it like actually starting that business? And again, we, we should say, I'm not sure if we mentioned it, you're located down in the Dallas Fort Worth area in Texas. You start this business in, in November 2021 as you and Mike kind of explore what might be the right option. 
What was it like actually getting it going? It was it was really a roller coaster, but my main focus was starting something that is that's not just local that can really be expanded whenever I want to expand. And I just felt like Oxyfresh really gave me that option just because of how big of a territory I got, and then the services that we provide is very it's very demanding for areas close by me, so to say. It's a lot of houses and apartment complexes and things like that that really need the service. So um, just putting it into perspective, it was it was it was complicated at first just for the simple fact there were still things that I was learning as well in the process. And I kind of sat back sometimes and was wondering like, am I really am I rushing myself? Am I like really, you know, ready for this? Because once I start, you know, there's there's no stopping. We already done jump ships and, you know, the money has been pushed around. Now I'm getting my equipment. I'm down here in um where was we? Lakewood, Colorado. That's where I initially started at. So I'm in Colorado, I'm doing jobs and things, I'm talking to technicians, I'm talking to franchisees, even the corporate um owner. I'm talking to everyone trying to see like is is this really the best decision for me? And everyone really just welcomed me in with open arms. You know, it was very, very friendly. Very like, like I'm right where I needed to be at this moment. And I, I thank Mike for helping me build up the confidence to actually go through with everything. He was very helpful through the whole process as well. Even now to this day, he still checks up on me to make sure everything is fine. So I really appreciate that. And so far, the business is, is doing good. I'm looking to hire employees at the moment also thinking about expanding pretty soon if everything just keeps going how it's going but yeah it's, it was it was challenging at the beginning but you know a few months down the line everything start falling in line coming together getting everything situated such as the vehicles and you know keep the jobs coming in rolling but yeah See, after we after we clip this interview, Victor, this is where you can post it on social media and be, you know, right now, if you're in the Dallas Fort Worth area, you know. <laughs> of course, of course. And, yeah. and, and Mike, um, you know, Victor is obviously he speaks about you in glowing terms here. Um, what advice we kind of asked the TES coaches at the end of these discussions or near the end of these discussions, what advice you have for um, aspiring entrepreneurs? And, and I know that not everybody fits into the same mold, but. If you had some advice, Mike, what would that be? Um, probably the biggest advice is just keep an open mind to um, options, um, you know, and do your and and investigate those. Be open to learning about them uh, because you never know what's going, what could be right for you. You know, all these all these different businesses are, are vehicles to people's goals. So, you know, the, you know, it's, um, we, you know, we have, a, we have a great program for people to, in a safe space, learn in detail about different businesses. Um, and, uh, you know, I, you know, I guess my advice to entrepreneurs, you know, it's not going to be easy. Victor can attest to that. You know, any business when you're starting it up is, is not going to be easy and there's going to be trials and tribulations and hills and valleys, but, you know, the end goal is, is, is well worth it. So, um, you know, I guess my my uh, advice would be, you know, uh, don't uh, don't uh, follow your dreams, follow follow your desires, um, keep an open mind, and uh, you know you can make it happen. Excellent. And uh, you know, if you want to look, or you know, if people are out there listening to this, and oh, I don't know, tomorrow maybe they were looking to read about this somewhere. Uh, where do you think they might be able to get a little more information on this? Well, they should definitely pick up the copy of Your Career Revolution, Reimagine and Reclaim the Life of Your Dreams. Pick up your copy on Amazon or, you know, um, any local bookstore. So definitely check that out. Victor, it's been so amazing chatting with you. And, you know, the one thing that I'm excited, there's so many vehicles you could have chosen to generate the kind of income you want, live the life you want, and build wealth and equity. But the fact that you chose franchising is fascinating to me because that, I think, is such a great way to start your entrepreneurial career where you get to be in business for yourself, but not by yourself, where you have a team of people right. to support you and learn the business acumen. Franchising is often misunderstood, but I just want to absolutely applaud you. I mean, you, you've done, you know, investing, you had a little startup, now you're um, in franchising. So just thank you for being with us today. 
thank you as well for even creating the program. The program was very helpful for me. And if you are a young, you know, entrepreneur who wants to look into any um, programs, this is definitely the program for you. All right. Awesome. Look at that. He's a spokesman too, Tamar. This is awesome. This is awesome right here. So uh, I want to thank everybody for tuning in. Thank our guest, uh, Victor Guy, obviously off to a great start here as an entrepreneur, uh, Mike Rachi, entrepreneur source uh, coach. And then of course, Tamara Loring, chief of brand ideology for the entrepreneur source. My name is Mike Toper. Uh, thank you for listening. This has been your career revolution. Mm-hmm.